All right, I'm going to give you an update on the cheap Subaru WRX project today. So one of the major problems with the car is the rear trailing arm mount and where the T-bar comes across and mounts, that area is completely rotted out of the car. So I'm going to repair that. So today I'm going to show you how I drop the trailing arm mount and how I remove the rear T-bar. There's a lot of good structural area that I can weld the patch panel in and I'll show you how I weld that patch panel in and reassemble the car. You can see the T-bar is right here where it mounts is right across there and you can see it's completely rotted out there. It's about ready to fall through. So that's completely shot and then we're going to walk back a little bit further towards the rear of the car and you can see where the trailing arm or comes up and mounts here. Now there's been a patch panel welded here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in my patch to this current patch panel, do a little bit more welding on this and then I'm also going to tie in up here where there's some good material. I'll clean that up and we'll weld to that area also. Alright so I'm not messing around today. I'm going to get this job done as quick as possible. So I'm going to start off by popping the exhaust off of it. At least the rear portion of the exhaust. I'll leave the front portion on the car. Alright moving down the exhaust. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop the exhaust off of this grommet. There we go. That one's down. I'm going to let the exhaust start to hang down. And to the rear we've got two of them. We've got a factory mount right here. I'm not currently using it but there's another grommet that goes across here. And then the center one is just right here. So we're going to pull that guy out of there. And the exhaust will just drop right out. Next up we're looking from the rear of the car and we're going to remove the drive shaft. So you got four 12 millimeter nuts holding the drive shaft on. Easy way to do that is just put a screwdriver up through the U-joint and then you can just break these things loose. Make sure you use a box end wrench though. You don't want to strip these out. Jam your screwdriver back up in there. And hold that and break them loose. They should come apart pretty easy. So you get all four of these guys out of here. And all we're going to do is we're just going to drop the drive shaft down from this joint. That you're going to want to put some force towards the front of the car and you're going to tap it just a couple times with a brass hammer. Do yourself a favor. Don't use a regular hammer. Use a brass hammer or something or a block of wood. Don't create more work for yourself by, jam by damaging these U-joints. So give that a couple taps and push forward and it'll come right out. Next up, we're going to remove the center section. So we've got these two 14 millimeter bolts. I hit it once already with some PB blaster. I'm going to hit them one more time. Uh, whatever you can do for rusty bolts to ensure they're going to come out. Uh, the other thing, I am going to use an impact, but use a six-point socket too. Uh, you know, whatever you can do to ensure these bolts are going to come out without stripping them, it's going to make life much easier for you. There we go. Zipped right out with no problem. I personally like to put the bolts back in. It takes a little bit more time, but... If I put them back into their perspective spots, it's a lot easier when I go to put back everything that I'm putting all the right bolts in the right spot. Alright, I'm going to get the tire out of the way and then I'm going to get a jack underneath the trailing arm of these two bolts right here. And then there's another one in front that I'm going to remove. So I'm going to take those out. I'm going to do these by hand and the only reason why I'm doing them by hand is I want to drop this down a little bit and see how much tension's on it because I might want to put another jack underneath here depending on the tension. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll take the last bolt out here and then I can use a jack to just to drop all this down out of the way. That way I don't have to worry about anything coming undone and falling on myself. Which I really am not a particularly big fan of. I actually hate when things fall on me. Alright. There we go. Tension's off of it. That's free. I still got sitting on the back jack, but I'm going to let that down, so, whoa, all right, so everything's free, so I've got a little bit of room to work up in there now. Okay, we're on to the passenger side now. I've sprayed it once already, but I'm going to spray a little bit more PB Blaster up into the threads on top here. Hopefully this will break free pretty easy, I hope. Again, I got a good six-point socket on here to break it free. And, and, I think I got lucky. All right, the bolt that came out of here, this was a 17 millimeter. And these two guys that I'm going to remove right now, these are 12 millimeter bolts. And they're pretty crusty. I did PB blast them. 
And I'm a little concerned how these are going to come out. So I'm just going to loosen these up a little bit. And I'm not going to take them all the way out. I'm afraid that's just going to be a, yeah, an issue. Uh, which could be something else that I'm going to need to... Yeah, okay. So not only am I fixing the area on the driver's side, it looks like I'm going to have to do some work on the passenger side now too. So one of these, oh, yeah, sometimes things don't go the way you want them to. So uh, it's good that I did it because I want this thing to be safe on the freeway. So the bolt on the back side, that whole thing's rotted out. So I'm going to fix that and put a tapping plate underneath. And this year, I'm going to hope I can get the rest of this out without breaking the bolt. It's a little snugger than I think it should be. A little more PD blaster just to maybe I can get it out without breaking it. Should be great. The less I gotta fix, the better. To be honest with you, I've been dreading this project for a little while for things like this. But I decided now just to dive into it and just fix it all so it's safe to drive on the freeway. So you well, know, it looks like I just need to retap this hole out and and it'll be fine but oh yeah look at this rod hole so that's where I just removed the plate from so that plate was originally sitting up just like that and then you could see big old rod hole there and the back side of the plate you can see where the bolt still stuck in the plate so what I'll do is I'm gonna cut all the the rod out of here I'll put some new material in and uh, a new tapping plate and that'll fix that. Okay, we moved on to the driver's side now. I'm gonna take these two 12 millimeter bolts out. I know that this one here, the 17 millimeter bolt is rotted up here completely through. So it's already spinning. So I'm hoping that I get these out without issue. All right, well, we're off to a good start. One bolt three. Ooh, they are crusty. Ah, all right, yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. As far as breaking, I just broke that bolt off in there. So my idea to break a few things as possible, yeah, didn't work out very well. So that's gonna be another fun one. So I'm gonna have to drill and easy out that out of there. All right, we got this emergency cable they don't want to take off. We're gonna to have to move this out of the way so we can drop the T-bar bolts. And they should, yeah, these are gonna come out no problem. Got the bolts out of the cable, now I can swing that cable out of the way. That should give me enough room to get this crossbar passed. So I'll do the same thing. The opposite side has uh, two tie downs just like that, so I'll remove those two. So I'm going to remove those guys and I'm going to get this bracket out of the way. This bracket you can see comes up and wraps around the T-bar. So that needs to be out of the way to get the T-bar down. I'm pretty sure this is a Michigan car or at least a northern car anyway with all the salt rust on it. Alright, the last few bolts that I got to take off are these eight. So I got four right here. I just broke these guys loose. I'm going to get these four out of the way and then I got two on this side wall and two on the other side wall. These guys will probably be pretty snug. Everything broke three. I'm gonna switch over to the air ratchet and I'm gonna do you guys all a favor and either mute this or maybe I'll put some cool music behind it so you don't have to listen to this awful movie. Unless that's something you like and you're welcome to listen to it. So every one of these got stuck in the socket and I've had to climb out from underneath the car and knock it out of the socket so that's been pretty enjoyable. And that's stuck in the socket too but I'm not climbing out. I'm going to switch my sockets over. Even with my air ratchet they were so much crud and crap on them. Each one's just going to be a, a little bit of a struggle. But the good news is I had planned to go for a run tonight 
and I guess I'm gonna skip my run and I'm just gonna use this for my workout today. All right. So we got that broke free. I'm gonna lower this with a jack just a little bit and give us some more room. There's the bottom plate out of the way. All right, the tapping plates are gonna come out, but you do push up on these guys, get them started, reach up on top. The front one's gonna come out easy, but the back one, you're gonna have to pull down hard on the yoke and lift up on the tapping plate. And I'll be honest with you, it's a bit of work, but you can get them out. All right, before I remove the T-bar, you can see all the nastiness on top of it. That all pulled out of that hole right there above it. So you can see that's quite quite the mess. Uh, the black panel on the uh, far side of it, that's where the repair was done before. So when I do the repair now, I'm gonna tack into that and then I'm also gonna go to the right where there's good material and I'll show you how I do that. Everything's out, it's unbolted and fall, fallen down on top of the emergency brake cables. So, and it's also caught up on the diff. So to get it past the diff and past the emergency brake cables, what you're gonna have to do is the outside of this housing, you're gonna have to lift up as high as you can. And then with your opposite hand, you're gonna have to pull down on the diff and slide it over. And it's not the funnest thing in the world. Once you get it slid past the diff, and just be a bit careful, there you go. And be really careful with your emergency brake cables so you don't mess those up. And you should just be able to slide this thing around. And, and out it comes. And to be honest with you, the T-bar is really not that hard to get out. I had some issues with rusted bolts, but if your bolts aren't rusted, uh, I think it's actually pretty easy to take out. This might be a struggle. I have a feeling I'm going to have to cut this out. So unfortunately this thing was rotted on here so bad that I wasn't able to get it out. So I'm going to have to take a cut off wheel to it and just cut it out of there and get a new bolt. I was hoping to use the bolt, but yeah, so be it. Okay, so there we go. Ends cut off and out she comes. It's a bummer we can't reuse the old bolt, but that's the way it goes. But anyway, this is done and ready to go back in. Okay, I'm just gonna make a quick cardboard template. You can make that out of cardboard or you can make it out of the steel material that you're gonna use. But uh, just so I can show you really quick, I'll make this one out of cardboard. All I'm gonna do is just take a couple quick dimensions off of here so I can transfer it out of the cardboard. Just to keep things nice and clean, what I'm gonna do for my bends is I'm gonna put the edge right on the table and I'm gonna put my straight edge right over the top of that and bend these over just to keep them nice and straight. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. This one's going to go the opposite direction. This one's coming up. And then this one here is a cut line, so I'm going to be doing them. Okay, that's cut off. And there's our bends that we need so far. We're also got another bend across the back side of this. It's going to be an inch off. And then what's going to happen is these corners will get cut out, this one and this one. There. And then we'll sit down underneath the car, take a look at it, make sure everything's just the way we want it. Alright, let's check it out. Okay, I just fit the cardboard up in here. Everything looks really good. It looks like I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna cut this angle back along here so that fits up nice. And then when you look underneath it, you can see where my old flange ends. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple measurements back this way. I'll mark the cardboard there and I'll cut this off. All right, so I got the cardboard finished up, cut in place. That was about a piece of cake to do. I'll go and transfer this over on a piece of sheet metal, bend it up the same way. And then uh, we're also gonna need to put the T-bar back in place. There's a tapping plate and a hole that holds the T-bar that's gonna to have to go in here. So I'll have to do that next too, which will mean setting the T-bar back in place, then putting a transfer pin through here so I can put the hole back in. 
Okay, now that we got our template, I'm going to flatten the template out. I'm going to transfer on to this 16-gauge uh, material. 16-gauge uh, material usually mics around uh, 1.5 millimeters or 060 uh, thousands. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to take a pencil. It's going to show up just fine on this material. It's very clean. I'm going to trace my template out real quick, and then I'm going to take it over the bandsaw, cut it out. Then I'll mark the bends and put the bends back in the sheet metal. All right, I'm just going to throw a pair of glasses on just to be safe here. Fire up the bandsaw, give us a quick cut. There we go, basic shape. I'm going to touch on the grinder real quick and clean up some of the rough edges from the saw cut. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and knock the burrs off of the wire wheel. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and transfer the bends back onto the material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these over and do these two bends first. Number one, number two, and number three on the back side. That way I got plenty of space to clamp down. When these two come up, then I'll be able to bend that tab down. So for my first bend, I've got everything clamped down, lined up. I've got it hanging off the corner of a steel table. Uh, this is a half inch, or actually five eighths steel plate table that I got it hung on. But you can do this in a vise too, it's not a big deal. This material is fairly soft and moves pretty easy. All I'm going to do is take a two by four and just this one's going to go nine degrees and just slowly work it around. I'm not in a rush. First bend's done. And again, you can do this in a steel vise. I got a pretty sharp edge on the table, which is no big deal. And I need these corners to be fairly sharp. But uh, if you were forming aluminum or something like that, you want to do this against the grain and you want to use a much bigger radius if you're working with aluminum because the last thing you want to do is split the inside corners on the aluminum. All right, so I finished up the uh, patch panel, so that looks pretty good. I've already had it underneath the car a couple times to fit it up. I've had to clean the corners up, put some radiuses on it, and clean up some of the edges a little bit to try to get it to fit good. So it fits really good up underneath there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple sheet metal screws on a few of the flanges, get that mounted up there where I'm going to weld it, then I'm gonna put the T-bar back on, transfer a hole through the bottom, then I'll have a hole through. And what I'm gonna do, instead of welding the nut just to this piece, it's gonna be a little stronger this way. What I've done is I've made a tapping plate to go on top of it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a larger hole through this part, and then this part here, I'm gonna put an on-size hole to the nut. I'm gonna weld the nut onto this plate, and I'm gonna let this plate float. I'm gonna use a little bit larger hole. That'll give me a little bit of tolerance, and a little bit of room in case I'm off a little bit on the T-bar. I'll be able to adjust that slightly with a larger hole on the bottom. And then having two material thicknesses, this 1.5 material, uh, that'll be a nice solid mounting point. So that's my plan. Let's get underneath. Let's put some sheet metal screws in, get that uh, tacked in place and uh, get our hole transferred. All right, I got the patch panel in place. I got a couple screws in. I've got the last screw to go on top. I did put a pilot hole on top. It's just way easier. I am using some self-tapping screws. There we go. Everything's in place, everything looks good. The other thing that I'm gonna do before I take this out is I'm gonna put new lines around here. I did clean this up good, but I wanna make sure that where I'm gonna weld is I'm gonna weld all along this flange, along here. I'm gonna bottom edge all this weld and then along here, all the way across the top and down. So this thing's gonna be rock solid, but I am gonna do a lot of welding, so I wanna make sure that all this material is really clean before I start welding on it. All right, I got the T-bar in place on the far side or passenger side. I did put the main body bolt in, and I did put the plate on just to make sure all the holes lined up. Now that I got the T-bar up in place, I'm gonna take a transfer pin. Looks like that. It's just a pin with a point on the end of it. I'm just gonna put that up through the hole. I'm gonna nail that a couple times with a hammer. That'll give me a nice transfer uh, point. So I'll take all this apart and uh, drill the holes in it and uh, weld it all together. T-bar out of the way. I can tell you that it wasn't the funnest thing to put back in here and take out, but I've got the hole transferred here. You can see where the mark is. I'm gonna take these three, three screws out, put this on the bench so we can put the hole in and put the tapping plate on the back of it. These screws are really important too, because one, they locate this. So when I put this back in, these three screws are gonna locate this before I start welding it. And the other thing with these three screws is it's gonna hold these flanges tight while I weld them and position them, because it's definitely hard to hold up here and try to weld it in place. So these screws make it so much easier to weld in place. All right, there we go. Patch panel out of the car now. 
what I did is I clamped my uh, tapping plate that I'm going to use on the bottom of this. So when I drill my holes through, I don't have to do it twice. I can just go drill through both materials. They'll line up perfectly this way. It just makes it easier. All right, we're in the mill vise now. I already lined it up and I'm just going to fire this thing up. I'm just going to put a smaller pilot hole in it first. I'm going to drill a 5 8 hole through here now and get it opened up. I do have a half inch bolt. This is the right length. I was looking for the one that came out was a 12 millimeter bolt. It was 90 millimeters long. I was having trouble. I found them at 80 millimeters, but 90 millimeters, not 90 millimeters long, so it'd be too short. So I wound up using an American bolt. I typically would never do that. I wouldn't use an American bolt on a Japanese car or vice versa, but it's what I had. And you know, sometimes on projects like this, it just works out that way. All right. So now I got my hole through both plates. Now what I'm going to do is unscrew these guys, take them off. I will weld my nut to this guy that will allow him to float around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in now and open this hole up so I got some room for this nut to float around in the hole. I'm just going to put a couple uh, good solid tacks on the nut, get our tapping plate together. So we We got the tapping plate all welded up. That came out just fine. I got my patch panel. What's gonna happen is I did slot the patch panel out so you can see what happens. Tapping plate goes in there and then I've got some movement in there. So that gives me a little bit of uh, wiggle room when I go to mount the T-bar cross member back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw all this back in. I'm gonna fit the T-bar back up and make sure the T-bar fits in here. My holes all line up before I weld it in. I'd like to go underneath and weld it in without putting the T-bar in because the T-bar is a pain in the butt to put in, to be honest with you. But as hard as the T-bar is to go in, it's even harder to cut this out and then make a whole new one and go through this whole process again because I didn't get the holes in the right location because I can't fix it once it's welded in the car. So back underneath the car we go. Just a note of caution to you, when you are welding underneath your car, please take note of all your fuel lines, where your fuel tank is located, where your filler neck is, even your brake lines and stuff like that, because the last thing you want to do is start welding close to a fuel line or uh, you know your gas tank or something like that and uh, have a major problem. So I typically, especially welding overhead, I, I definitely prefer to MIG weld versus TIG weld. But MIG welding shoots a lot of sparks where TIG welding doesn't shoot. Uh, you still have some sparks stuff from it, from especially me. I'm a crappy welder, so uh, you do want to be careful with that. But please keep in mind, be safe. Patch panels all in, ready to go. I've got the welder hooked up. I've got my ground on. You can see back here. And let's see how this goes. I get it tacked into place and remove the screws is the plan right now. But the space is tight. I don't have a lot of room. All right, tacking through this thing's been a bear. Trying to keep my helmet on. I'm trying to get my foot on the pedal. And the torch in my hand has been definitely a challenge underneath here. I probably should have jacked the car up with other five or six inches to give myself a little bit more room, but yeah, we'll struggle through it. All the welding work's done. I did take a wire wheel and a grinding disc and clean up some of the welds. I'm going to give it a quick coat of chassis saver. It's kind of like poor 13. I guess it's a poor man's version of it. Although how much I paid for it, I don't think it was very poor. Um, but I'm just going to take a brush, go along. I don't really care. I typically I like to spray something like this, but in this case, I don't really care. All I do is I just want to save the material from rusting. So. The one thing that I really don't like about this stuff is it takes forever to dry. In about 10 minutes, I'm gonna start putting this thing together. So I should have wet paint all over me and make a big giant mess of this as I'm right, just going through and fixing some of the things that got screwed up as I was taking the car apart. If you remember right, this mount area where this plate comes up for the T-bar cross member, I ripped this whole nut plate out of here when I was taking it apart. It was all rotted. So I went in and I made a patch panel, put a new nut in here and welded that all in. So I'm just gonna give that a quick shot of paint. Over the driver's side or left-hand side of the car, I forgot about this, but I also broke a bolt when I was taking the plate off for the T-bar cross member. 
So I'm gonna have to drill and tap this out of here too. One thing you wanna keep in mind when you're drilling these things out is make sure you center punch them and drill them dead center. Off screws, so just make sure you're centered and you should really drill like butter. Well, that's the worst possible thing that could happen. Breaking the drill bit in there sucks. Hopefully, I think I was about break, broke through, so I'm gonna see if I can't just push that one all the way through. That does suck. All right, I got my screw up fixed. I did have to drill that. I broke the drill bit off in here, unfortunately. I was just trying to push too hard. That was my fault. I should have just uh, pulled the drill back out, knocked the chips out of it, and gone back in. So I spent the last hour uh, grinding and uh, just tapping the end of the drill bit up until I finally pushed it out of the top and was able to re-drill it. So, and I went back and I re-tapped the hole. So now we're all good. Everything's good to put back together finally. All right, ready to put this back together again. So first up, we got to get the T-bar cross member back in place. This can be a little bit tricky, but hopefully it goes pretty smooth. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get it back up over the top of both of the emergency brake cables. It's cross member up over the differential. What you have to do is you gotta go to the driver's side of the car, start passing this over the top, and pull the diff down at the same time. So it's a bit of a trick to do, but it can be ah, done fairly easy. The next thing that's a bit of a challenge is putting these U-bolts back in. And if I can get untangled, let me free. Second round of the U-bolts. First round was a failure, I couldn't get them in. I just couldn't pull down hard enough to get it in place, so. All right, that was the hard one. Now the other one's gonna be a little easier to put in. I'm gonna line the diff plate up and get this guy in here. There is a big indent in the back of this. This has to go towards the back and next to the diff. So if not, it's not gonna clear the diff properly and you'll never get the holes lined up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snug up these 17 millimeter bolts. That's gonna draw this uh, cross member together a little bit more and I'll be able to get the 14 millimeter bolts on the side. So. Go ahead and do that. Okay, now it should get these 14 millimeter bolts to line up pretty easy. Should just be able to move the cross member around a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Back on the driver's side now. I did put the bolt through the passenger side uh, cross member. I got that just hand tight right now just to hold the position. So next up, We've got this plate. This guy goes back on the top here before we bolt them on. So that just lines up there. The plate goes on the bottom side like this. And then our new bolt's going to go through. So if I did everything right, this should line up perfectly. It might take a little bit to get started in the tapping plate. Might have to play around a little bit with that. Let's see put the trailing arm up I'll give you a quick look at all the patchwork that we did so you can see here that all this was welded in place all across the top all through there I even actually put a bolt through there too I was getting a little bit close to the gas tank so I was just being careful there but you can see where everything's all welded in so last up trailing arm to body so this is gonna get torqued to 85 foot-pounds or 115.24 Newton meters. All right, we're gonna put the 12 millimeter bolts back in the carrier. Get that guy pushed up in there. Get these guys started. Snug these guys up and then move it on to the U-joints next. All right, next up, dry shaft flange to differential. And I'll 
tighten everything down, 12 millimeter wrench. What I'll do is I'll hold one of the tires or one of the wheels. That's gonna wrap up the repair for the Subaru. Everything worked out good. I've been driving around a bit. Everything feels nice and solid going down the road. Uh, I've hit some big bumps. I've gone down some dirt roads and the car handles and performs great. So everything's all uh, completed on that repair. And uh, yeah, like I said, just to recap a little bit, don't be afraid. I mean, this was a big project, pretty labor intensive. Uh, financially, not much money involved in it. One piece of sheet metal from Home Depot, I think I paid $11 for and a couple bolts. So really uh, not much. Uh, the only maybe uh, heavy repair specialty tool that you're going to need and you can get away with a very inexpensive, cheap 110 MIG welder that'll plug into you know any type of uh, 20 amp household plug. As long as it's a heavy duty 110 plug, you'd have no problem with it. So really anybody can do it. I want to thank everybody who's been watching and subscribing. It's been really great. I just kind of do this on the side as, uh, for fun for myself. So it's great to see people who are liking my videos and subscribing to them. So hey, thanks a lot guys. I really appreciate that. I'm Mike, and thanks for watching 33 Mile Garage.